Good morning, my name is Master Sergeant Carmody and I'm gonna be your instructor for this next block of instruction. By a show of hands, is there anyone out here on any type of waiver that will prevent you from attending this drill lesson? Outstanding, there's nobody. In case of an emergency, we're gonna evacuate the drill pad, we'll go back up underneath the overhang where we're gonna size it up and take accountability. Trainees. Up until this point in time, if I've wanted you to turn 180 degrees to the right, I've simply told you, let's turn 180 degrees to the right. Now I'm going to teach you in this class right here how to do so with more professionalism. You're probably asking yourself, why is this important? Why do I have to pay attention to this class? Well, it just so happens that about face is a graduation requirement, meaning you're going to be evaluated on this in the later weeks of training on a progress check. Your ability to perform this drill movement correctly is going to aid in your ability to pass that progress check. But even more so than that, when you apply the fundamentals of discipline that you're going to learn in this drill lesson, and you apply those with your three Air Force core values of integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all you do, those fundamentals of discipline along with those core values are going to set you up for success in every other aspect of your time here in basic military training, every other task that you need to do. Even more so than that, when you learn to apply using those fundamentals of discipline with those three Air Force core values, it's going to set you up for a lifetime of success in the operational Air Force. Today I'm going to teach you how to perform an about face. In doing so, I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like to perform the drill movement properly. Then I'm going to teach you the requirements for you to be able to perform the drill movement properly. Finally, I'm going to break the drill movement down basically in slow motion so that every single one of you understand every single aspect of what my body does at every given point in time throughout the drill movement. After that, we're going to learn some things like by the numbers and coach pupil so that we can apply, apply this drill movement. Your objective for this class is without reference perform individual drill movements on command with no more than two instructor assist per movement. Trainees, I can't expect you to be able to perform this drill movement unless I first demonstrate how to perform this drill movement. So for this first view, I want you to understand I represent every single one of you at the exact same time with no exceptions. I want you to pay attention to the lower portion of my body, specifically what my feet do as I perform this drill movement. About hoots. I'm going to perform this drill movement for you one more time. This time I still represent every single one of you at the exact same time with no exceptions. However, I want you to pay attention for this view to what the upper portion of my body does, specifically my hands. About hoots. As with anything that you do in the requirement, any task that you're given, there's always going to be requirements that you have to meet before you can actually perform whatever task it is. And the same is true for about face. There's two requirements. The first requirement is that you have to be halted at the position of attention. I can't even perform this drill movement unless I'm standing that way. The next requirement is that we have to perform this drill movement at the cadence of quick time. The cadence of quick time is 100 to 120 steps or beats per minute. I like to think of the cadence of quick time as like a dance. In a dance, there's certain rhythm that the movements have to be done by, and the same thing is true for this. There's a rhythm at which this drill movement is performed. Someone raise your hand and tell me what the very first requirement I gave you was. Right here, Trainee Scott. So our Trainee Scott reports his order. The first requirement was that you must be at the position of attention. That's right, he said I had to be at the position of attention, more specifically, halted at the posi position of attention. Outstanding answer, Trainee Scott. When I'm halted at the position of attention, I'm gonna receive a set of commands. Those commands are gonna be about face. About is your preparatory command. It's your opportunity to mentally prepare yourself. On the command of execution phase, understand that this is a two count drill movement. In order to complete count one of the drill movement, you're gonna raise your right leg from your hip just enough for your foot to clear the ground. 
without bending your knees, you're gonna place your right foot a half a shoe length behind and slightly to the left of the left heel. From here, you're gonna distribute the weight of the body onto the ball of the right foot and the heel of the left foot to establish pivot points. Keep your legs straight, but not stiff. And your upper body needs to remain at the position of attention as you do this. Trainee Gibson, how many counts did I tell you this drill movement was? Sir, Trainee Gibson reports as ordered. You said this was a two count drill movement. That's right, it's a two count drill movement. In order to complete count two of this drill movement, keeping my hands at my sides, I'm gonna pivot 180 degrees to the right, assisted by slight pressure. Uh, 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 I'm gonna pivot 180 degrees to the right with a slight twisting motion from my hips. My upper body needs to remain at the position of attention throughout this drill movement. Upon completion of the drill movement, my entire body will be back at the position of attention, my heels will be together on line, and my feet will form a 45 degree angle. Who has questions pertaining to this drill movement? Outstanding, nobody has any questions pertaining to the drill movement. We're about to apply this drill movement, but we're gonna do so using what's called by the numbers. By the numbers is an informational command used to break down a two count drill movement so that it can be performed only one count at a time. The command you're gonna receive is gonna be by the numbers, right face. Right being your preparatory command or your opportunity to mentally prepare yourself and face being your command of execution or your go command. When you hear the command of execution face, you're gonna perform count one and count one only of that drill movement and then pause for further commands. As you recall, count one of this drill movement looks like this. You're then gonna receive another set of commands. Ready two, ready being your preparatory command and two being your command of execution or your go command. When you hear the command of execution two, you will perform count two of the drill movement and count two only. As you recall, count two of the drill movement looks like this. You will continue performing all drill movements by the numbers until you hear another informational command, this time without the numbers. When you hear without the numbers, you will perform count one and count two of the drill movement without pausing in between counts. Trainees, that's a whole lot of information for you to digest right there. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. For this first view, I'm gonna demonstrate using by the numbers. I want you to pay attention to the lower portion of my body as I perform this, specifically what my feet do on the different counts. I want you to understand I represent every single one of you at the exact same time with no exception. By the numbers. About. Hoots. Right up. Two. For this next view, I'm gonna perform using without the numbers. For this view, I want you to pay attention to the upper portion of my body, specifically what my hands do, and understand I represent every single one of you at the exact same time with no exceptions. Without the numbers. About. Peace. Trainees, we're gonna use, we're about to apply this drill movement and we're gonna do so using the coach pupil method. First and third elements, you're gonna be coaches. Second and fourth elements, you're gonna be pupils. Coaches, you're gonna remain at ease. And pupils, you are gonna to respond to my commands. I'm gonna tell my coaches what I want them to look for, when I want them to look for it, when I want them to step in and make corrections, and when I want them to step out. At no time are you gonna to touch another trainee. These will be verbal corrections only. After a while, we are going to reverse the roles so that everyone has the opportunity to apply. In the event that we have an odd number of trainees, odd number of trainee, raise your hand and identify yourself because I can have two coaches watching only one, one pupil, but I will not have two pupils performing with only one coach watching. Sir, at this time I would apply. 
At ease. How would you apply? So I would make individual and overhead corrections. I would separate my uh, elements probably at one arm's length interval, just like we were at PT formation. I would have my coaches identify themselves by raising their hand, and I would put them at ease. I would have my pupils identify themselves by raising their hands, and then put them at ease, or and then uh, have them stay at the position of attention. I would tell my coaches what I wanted them to look for as I would before I called the command. I would tell them very specifically. I either want you to look at the lower body or upper portion of the body. I want you to make sure their hands stay at the position of attention on their sides or I want you to make sure upon completion of count one that they have the proper spacing in their feet a half a shoe length behind slightly to the left and I would be very specific with what I told them I would then give the command by the numbers and the command of about face after my trainees uh, perform the drill movement I would have my coaches I would let them know to step in at that time make any corrections while they were making those corrections I would also be making my way through the flight making all sorts of corrections any type of correction that I could make on the trainees as well as mentoring the coaches on things that they were missing when I was satisfied that I had made all the corrections that the trainees had adjusted all the trainees to where I needed them to be I would tell the coaches to step out I would then give them another set of instructions. Hey, on count two, we're going to look at X, Y, and Z and be very specific on what I wanted them to look at. I would call the command ready to, and then I would give my co uh, coaches the opportunity to step in and make those corrections. After they made those corrections, I would have them step out. As I said earlier, I would also be in there zigzagging through the flight, making as many corrections as I could on both the trainees and also mentoring the coaches on what the things that they were missing. I would do this several times and then I would reverse the roles. After I had reversed the roles, I would get into doing the first group without the numbers, second group without the numbers, and finally combine the flight as a whole to where we are all performing without the numbers. Uh, and, and I would take it from there, sir. Application is complete. Trainees, I saw some things that we need to improve on today. Raise your hand and identify yourself if you were having a hard time getting your heels online and your feet at a 45 degree angle. That's right, quite a few of you were, I saw the same thing. The reason that you're having a hard time getting your feet at a 45 degree angle or your heels online upon completion of count two of the drill movement is because we're not focusing on count one of the drill movement. There's very specific instructions on how to complete count one. Those instructions that we're not getting right are you have to make sure that your, your right foot is placed a half a shoe length behind and slightly to the left. As I perform count one, look at the size of my feet right here. I need to place this foot a half a shoe length behind so the size of my foot is the distance and spacing that you need to see here. If my foot is too close, Upon completion of count two of the drill movement, my heels won't be on mine. If my foot is too far upon completion of count two, my heels won't come together at all. And that's what I saw from the majority of you. So we really, in order to correct this, correct count two of the drill movement, we really need to spend time focused on count one of the drill movement and making sure that that we have proper spacing within our feet one thing i did notice that we did extremely well is we all kept our hands suspended to the seam of our trousers we all kept our upper body at the position of attention throughout both counts of that drill movement that was good let's work on the other piece today i taught you how to perform an about face I showed you how the drill movement looked when it was look, when it was done correctly. After that, I uh, taught you the requirements that you needed to know in order to perform the drill movement properly. I then broke the drill movement down into slow motion so that you could all see every single aspect of what my body did at any given point in time throughout the drill movement. We then learned by the numbers. We then learned coach pupil, and finally, we had the opportunity to apply as a flight. This was all to meet our objective of without reference, perform individual drill movements on command with no more than two instructor assists per movement. Why was it so important that we learned this lesson, trainees? Number one, it's a graduation requirement. I already stated that you're gonna to have to perform this drill movement later on in the weeks of training. But even more so than that, when you learn to apply this drill movement using your Air Force core values of integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all you do, 
and you discipline yourself, meaning that you're performing this drill movement up in the dormitory nonstop, day after day after day. You learn to be disciplined in life. You learn to take that same discipline and that same application of the core values and apply it to all other tasks that you do here in basic military training. Even more so than that, when you do those same things with those core values and that discipline, and you apply it to your everyday life, it's gonna lead you to a lifetime of success in the operational Air Force. Trainees, I have an assignment for you. We just learned how to do the coach pupil method. Tonight in the dormitory at 1900 hours, we are going to break into our respective bays. We're gonna get with the wingman and use the coach pupil method and we are specifically going to work on that foot placement on count one of the drill movements. We're gonna perform count one with our wingman watching. Our wingman will look down at our feet and tell us if we have that proper spacing, if we're a half a shoe length behind and slightly to the left. If we have the proper spacing on count one, we'll then perform count two of the drill movement and see where our heels come up. If we don't, we'll perform count one over. Our wingman will say, you don't have the proper spacing, you'll go back to attention and perform count one again. Trainees, this is all gonna prepare you for the next phase of training. The next phase of training that you have is technical training. And you'll learn throughout the Air Force that we don't do anything by ourselves. We use coach pupil in multiple different facets of our time here in, in the Air Force. Everything that we do, we're having somebody watch over us. Someone check out our back and someone make sure that we're doing the right thing. Trainees, this concludes my lesson today on about face. When I give you the command of dismissed, you're gonna zipper down into elements, you're gonna march back to your gear, you're gonna hydrate and wait for me to get back to you to give you further instructions. Sir, this completes my lesson.